Nearly two years back, this was one of the only few EVs on the market. Fast forward to today, nearly every single brand has got an EV under its belt. So does this still remain as competitive? Today we're taking a look at the Tesla Model 3 facelifted or as it's known, the Model 3 Highlander. Let's find out. Now if you're thinking about trading in your car for a facelifted Tesla Model 3 like this one, try selling it with Quotes instead. Quotes helps you sell your car quickly and easily. With the new Quotes door set, get a professional inspection by our certified mechanics at your convenience anywhere on the island. Quotes will then auction out your car online to its wide network of dealers to bid on your car. Once bidding is complete, Quotes will update you with their best offer price at no obligation. It's that easy. To find out more, visit Quotes.com.sg. That's Q-U-O-T-Z.com.sg. Now let's go back to the review. The face of the Tesla Model 3 Long Range is priced at $121,000 before COE. The dual electric motors produce 491 brake horsepower and 660 Nm of torque. The single-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.4 seconds. The 78 kWh battery has a drive range of 629 km. For more details on the Tesla Model 3 Long Range or any other car, head on to sgkarma.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Now starting off by the front, you can tell that it's a lot nicer. Things look sleeker, angular, kind of like like previously it was called, I called it the early era Panamera because things were very bulbous, kind of like almost like a frog and like large eyes. Things now are a lot more sleeker. You get a very sharp daytime running light as well as your signal lights inside here. Things look a lot more angular, very more modern, which is kind of like what all the other car makers are doing, but that looks good. That's why also says that this has now better aerodynamics as compared to the previous generation. And then down here, of course, you get your Tesla logo and a frunk underneath. Now let's move on to the side. Now over on the side of this long range variant, you're gonna get 19 inch wheels. However, these are the Nova wheels that come with an additional $2,000 option. If not, you can get the stock 18 inch for no additional cost. Other than that, the rest of the side is pretty much the same. However, there is a new piece of metal inside here that Tesla says boosts passenger safety in the event of a crash. Now let's move on to the rear. Now over on the rear, you get a rear new boot with new one-piece C-shaped tail lights, a new Tesla logo. The boot is now 594 litres, which is 23 litres more than the previous model and also at the sides. Now the bins go deeper right here. And if you need more space, you can of course lift up for a hidden compartment, anti-trolley and the luggage, of course, no problem at all. Now let's check out the rear. Now we're over in the rear of the facelifted Tesla Model 3. This is my headroom and my legroom. Of course, you get the same panoramic sunroof. I'm 1.75 meters tall. This is my head space. This is my comfortable driving position. And my leg space is plenty. Although there is the raised boot floor because of the battery below. What you'll notice, most of the things, while well, they are the same vegan leather, very cushy interior. It, the white kind of accentuates the space, so it doesn't feel that crappy. It really feels a lot bigger than it is. But what's new is this new 8-inch touchscreen infotainment for the rear, which lets you select your aircon through the touchscreen, kind of like the front. You have to meddle with it. There's no physical lever to switch around. But you can now use this as a theater screen for Netflix, YouTube, Disney+. Plus. If not, you can even play your games. And I honestly, this is just a really nice complement to the rest of the techie interior and it just looks really really good really sharp and high def on this piece of screen right here you have two USB-C fast charging and your armrest is right here with cup holders now if you want to shift into the middle you can shift over very easily it is a flat floor there's no transmission tunnel even though it's dual motor all wheel drive so things are going to be very comfortable of course headroom is going to be a little bit of an issue but still you can see three and it's going to be a little bit comfortable but of course it is a it is a compact sedan, so that's what you're gonna get now. Let's move on to the front. Now over in the front of the Tesla Model 3, things are very familiar yet a little bit different. You get like this new soft touch material right here. You get more of your ambient lighting, lighting one round around the cabin, which is a really nice touch. And of course, one of the more controversial points is the new Tesla steering wheel. Totally no stocks at all. No signal stock, no wiper stock, and no gear shift stock. Everything is pretty much either here or here, just like the rest of the controls in the car. Aircon is through here, um, setting your steering wheel, how deep or how shallow it is. The mirrors, it's all through here and your steering wheel. And now even your signal indicators right here, buttons on the steering wheel, 
as well as your high beam and even your wiper it is everything is on the steering wheel right now so love it or hate it i think that's up to you um it does take a little bit of getting used to but we'll touch more on that in a bit other than that you still get the very large 15.4 inch infotainment system it is packed with a ton of features like the toy box the arcade if you want to go to mars you can go to mars and of course there's also driving recorders sentry mode you know your tesla is just parked packed to the brim with features like this gear shift is also now right here so driving is moving forward reversing is pulling it down and then your hazard light is right here so things are still very tesla for most of your regular drivers it will take a little bit of getting used to down here it's pretty much the same dual wireless chargers for your for your phone for you the driver as well as the passenger no apple carplay and android auto also a very tesla thing you get two cup holders here with a little bit of a rubber teeth to hold your things in and if not then a deep cubby space here as well as here so plenty of storage spaces speaking of storage space if you need more there's also the glove box which like a tesla is still accessed through the screen so no physical opener here uh, right now we are still on mars and then i just open up this to reach the glove box um no through here yeah the screen the car settings controls yes glove box there we go now this is car drive as well as it looks one way to find out okay so driving the the facelifted or rather model 3 highlander as they call it in other markets what does it feel like well things are really familiar it's a very still very tesla like everything is different it's kind of like a car from ikea um a little bit of differences things are softer nicer more refined which kind of you know people they used to say oh because it's a car made by non-car makers it's a little bit different but things have started to go in the car maker direction you get like this soft touch here ambient lighting which previously kind of goes against whatever tesla was saying like ah oh, it's you know they don't need it like things like buttons uh things like switches everything they just chopped out to make way for like things like buttons that saved a lot of costs so something like ambient lighting is totally doesn't make sense financially but it's what car people want so things are a bit nicer on the outlook as well things look a lot better on the inside driving still feels like an immense amount of power however keep in mind though this time the long range um the one that we tested previously performance 3.3 seconds dual motor this is also a dual motor but it is the long range version so it's a little bit muted this is about um somewhere in 4.5 4.6 seconds i can't recall but yeah so immediately that's the first thing you feel that it's not as raw as because i remember personally so far tesla has been one of the mo the most raw power deliveries of any of the electric vehicles uh, model uh poster 2 dual motor even the seal dual motor what else uh xc40 c40 the seal the the tesla rather model 3 previous generation pre facelift gave you one of the most raw power deliveries slapping you on at the back of your head when you put your foot down to the pedal and that was just it was just something to be that one that really was the master of its class right now you just put your foot on yeah you feel the g-force but not exactly going to slap you to the back of the chair that kind of level tesla says it's more refined it feels that way but at the same time i kind of feel like it's lost that competitive edge that being the one that does that other than that the car is takes a little bit more getting used to even more so than from a regular ice car to the first generation model 3 there are no more stocks you you don't have your signal stock you don't have your wiper stock you don't have your uh gear shift stock which good riddance to that I, I don't like that like you know that and another brand that had that just just personally i prefer something else in terms of handling the car still feels really nimble it's no track machine it's no rs but it is very agile points where you want to go it's not super communicative the steering 
you still feel things. Uh, it's fast, but it's not a track machine. It's not track oriented. It's not like a heat seeking missile, but you still can steer it pretty, pretty easily. One thing though I have to bring up is that the brakes, they kind of feel a little bit more spongy, a little bit softer, and it feels like it's not big enough. I feel like they need more, more, more pots inside the brakes for this one. I feel like I need more stopping power, even though it is a reduced amount of power from four something from 3.3 seconds to four something. I feel like I need a little bit more braking power. I don't know if it's something to do with how efficient they want to make the regenerative braking, but it it's I feel like it's a little bit needs more bite, especially with this amount of top end power. In terms of NVH, things are very muted. Inside the cabin, wind penetrates somewhere about 90 kilometers per hour onwards. You get a little bit of that, but I don't hear anything of other cars on the outside. So it's very comfortable. Of course, you still get your double glazed windows. So um, it's it, it mutes out the sun, but I still feel a little bit of the sun. So of course, you're not going to get a cover like some of the other EVs. But I think it does a good enough job, but it still feels like a little bit of radiating heat coming through from the massive panoramic sunroof. So in terms of safety, the Tesla, I feel like it's super ahead of its game because this number one is you get the, I don't know what they call it, but your monitor right here, you can see the lines on the road, you can see cones, you can see line markings on the lane. So right now, three arrows coming up as we're crossing the junction. Everything appears right here. So it really gives you peace of mind to know that the car is really seeing all of these. So some of the other ones, safety systems in the market, all you're going to get is a little symbol that says, hey, things are activated. But this one really lets you see whatever it is on the car. And look, seal, BYD seal. So in terms of safety, I feel like this is another one. It, it right, sits right up there with Toyota and kind of feel very, very safe. Of course, you have your autopilot. So you can see lane markings, following the lane, tap, tap this twice, and it's pretty much level two self-driving. So it's the Tesla Model 3 Highlander facelift, will buy, won't buy, or go try. Now if you ask me, this car is a go try. It's coming really close to will buy, but I still feel like some of the kings have got to be worked out. So of course, straight away, looking at competitors, elephant in the room, elephant seal in the room is of course, the BYD seal 3.8 seconds, which, I think really pushed this Tesla to an interesting point because pre-facelift, the Tesla was more expensive than the SEAL. And the SEAL was the cheapest dual motor electric vehicle on the market. But post-facelift, usually cars go facelift and then up 20-30%. Post-facelift, this Model 3 became cheaper and it's now cheaper than the dual motor Tesla. So if you want strongest, super fast EV, super fun to play with, and still, you get that regular everyday EV life that's really, really, you know, convenient to live with and you get your EV charging. You still want the dual motor power, you can get this Tesla and that's one of the biggest appeals that right now it's one of the cheapest dual motor EVs in the market. However, there are some things, of course, back then when we did the review for the first generation Model 3, there were some things that had to be worked out and currently right now as well, even more things. So, Things like the lack of stocks, um, things like um, the braking, there needs to be more bite to the braking. So I feel like if, though, if they work those things out, that would be a definite no-brainer will buy. But otherwise, for now, even in the market, even though it's presenting a very, very good use case, like one of the cheapest dual motor EVs, this car has got to be a go try. So that's it, that's our review of the Tesla Model 3 facelift. What do you think? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Let us know down in the comments below, as well as any other car that you'd like to see us try out or any other feature that you'd like to ask us about. Leave it in the comments and I'll read every single one of these. Now, if you've made it this far, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to us and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Also, follow us on TikTok. We are at SG Karma. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Um, middle, armrest, cup holders, cup holders, armrest. Ah, excuse me.